your life. You will be free from the devil as far as taking you to hell. Oh, he'll fight you and he'll battle you and he'll lie on you and he'll tell you everything in the world that you can't do this and you can't do that and all of those things. But folks, I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ is the only remission for sin. You might say, preacher, I've lived pretty good. <clears throat> I've never done very many bad stuff in my life. I hear this all the time. I hear people say, well, I go to church every now and then, and when I can, going to church don't get you to heaven. Going to prayer meeting don't get you to heaven. You go to church in a prayer meeting because you're on your way to heaven, and you enjoy it. You love it because that's where Jesus is. He took the place of the, of the other houses you used to hang out at. Now you've turned your mind, your body, and your soul against those places, and you've turned it around, and now you come on Sunday morning and are sitting in the house of prayer, in the house of worship, in the house of glory. You know why? Not because that you were so good that you got here. You're sitting here because you realize you couldn't make it without Jesus Christ. And you're here because of him. We're not here this morning for our glory. God can get glory without us being here. But praise God this morning, I'm glad he allowed me to come here this morning for his glory. If you've been out of church for a while because you've been sick, I know his brother sister Lawson has. That don't take the want to out of your house. Oh, so last Sunday, I wanted to be in church. I tried to find a preacher on television. I couldn't find one. I tried to, you know, all that sort of stuff. Listen, let me tell you something for God meant for us to follow him and when you follow the Lord you will want to be where God is yeah. hallelujah you want to be where God is the rich young ruler said when he came to him he said good master what must I do to be saved what can I do to change my life and Jesus looked at him and told him he and he said told Jesus how good he was. Listen, when you come to get saved or you come to pray, you don't need to tell Jesus how good you are. He knows exactly where you are. He knows what you're doing every second of your life and you don't have to tell him how, what you've given up and all that. He already knows it. All you have to do is walk into the throne room of heaven because you've got the privilege to do so because Jesus opens the door and says, come on in. It doesn't matter. You might say, I'm not worthy to walk in there. No, I'm not worthy to walk in there either. But praise God, when Jesus Christ came in my life, he made me worthy to walk in to the throne room of God. Where men cannot go, but where the Christians and the people of God can go into the throne room of God. In the time of trouble, in the time of loss, in the time of necessity, when you've gone as far as you can go, and you can't go any farther. I thank God that you can go to Jesus Christ and take one more step and you'll be in the throne room of God and you can lay your petition at his feet and my God sitting on his throne in heaven. He knows who you are. He knows your name. Matter of fact, he even knows how much hair you've got on your head. If you've got 3,122 hair on your head, Brad, and looks to me like that's about how many you got. <coughs> God knows knows exactly how many is there. And another thing, God knows how, if somebody only had two, then God knows that. I heard about this fellow just only had one hair left on the top of his head. And he just, he'd take care of it. He would comb it and he would put the, uh, you know, the wax on it and oh, he'd look in the mirror with it. One morning he walked in the mirror, that hair was gone. He hollered for his wife, said, honey, pray hard, I've gone bald. And so God, but God knew that was the only hair that he had left on his head. But God knew it was there. And God knew when he lost it. There's not a little sparrow this morning that will fall from the sky except God knows exactly where he fell. Oh, hallelujah. You, I'm talking about a big God here, folks. I'm not talking about a God that can't keep you from sin. I'm not talking about a God that saves you in your sin. I'm talking about a God that saves you from your sin. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I'm not talking about a God that leaves you in your problem without any help. He can not stop every problem, but he don't leave you there long. I'm talking about a God who can be with you in the valley. He can be with you on the mountaintop. I'm talking about a God that can save, sanctify, heal, and keep. I'm talking about a man named Jesus Christ the son of the living God. And brother, if I had a title to this today, it would be Jesus saved. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus saved. Jesus never turned anybody down. There are some that turned him away, but he never turned anybody down. Now, listen, I can't save you this morning. Uh, this church can't save you. You can become a member of this church. You can come every service. You can do everything in this church that needs to be done. But unless you've repented of sin and let Jesus Christ take first place in your life, you will never know what it's like to walk on the streets of gold. Now, I know that men's thought up way. I've got a nephew in Fleming County Hospital. Mitch and I stopped Friday afternoon to see him. He's had cancer for quite a while. He's had a kidney removed and he recovered and everything. He's always recovered. And I went to see him uh, at his home and then we stopped in to see him uh, Friday afternoon. And his brother and his sister and, and uh, his other two brothers were there and so on. And I walked in and asked him how he was. He said, I don't know. He said, he didn't tell me anything. And he was smiling and laughing and everything, you know, and talking. He had never realized yet what the doctor was going to tell him when he walked in that door. That doctor walked in, kindest doctor I ever heard talk, and went up to him and he told him. He said, we've given you 10 pints of blood. Yeah, and, and now it's already gone down to eight. He said, I'm going to tell you what the problem is. Your body is not manufacturing any more blood. He said, it's not leaking. It's not going out somewhere. Your body is not making blood. And he said, we cannot give you any more. It would only prolong uh, this for a little while. But he said, we have to cut off everything that we're doing for you. We have to take it away. Because your blood cells, as you know, in your body, they die ever so often. They continually go through a process of dying and being remade. But he couldn't remake it. And so he asked him, said, do you want to go to hospice at home? Do you want to go to Maysville? There's one in Lexington. He said, I would prefer Maysville. Refer that to you. And he never even showed any emotion whatsoever until the doctor told him this was final. It'll just be a little while. The doctor said, I can't tell you how long that you will make it. But in other words, you're not going to make it. And he had his glasses on. He took them off. Tears began to stream down his face. You know why? Because he had came to that wall that he couldn't go through. He came to that wall of no hope. And he tears was in his eyes. And it broke him because he heard that. Folks, let me tell you. I, we had prayer with him before we left. I don't know. I, I pray you get saved. You think if I could save somebody I wouldn't have reached over and said, Billy, take my hand. I'm going to save you. I couldn't do that. I only had to pray that Jesus Christ would come and save him, lying there in that bed. That he would, he doesn't know anything about uh, Christ. He doesn't know anything about church or anything like that. But yet, you know what? Neither did I. I started out the same way myself. Neither did I. But there's a God in heaven that can touch him and move him and convict him. And before he leaves this world, I've got all the hope in my heart that I can carry that Jesus Christ is going to save